Hi and welcome to Polly Originals with Fiona Abel Smith. So today's project is to make the tendril cane. And we make this one as a triangular cane and I've just put it into a veneer here for you so you can see how it comes out. Each time I've made this cane it comes out slightly different and for me that's actually quite fun and exciting. That means every time you cut down through you're never sure what you're going to get. But it also means for all of you no pressure because there's no pressure for yours to turn out exactly the same as mine because it's highly unlikely that it is going to. So just relax into this one, experiment, enjoy and have fun by creating your own one. We're going to make two Skinner blends and then we're going to make shapes and then just entwine them one on top of the other to create this effect. And it all depends on how you swirl them, which colours you put into which directions, how many of each one you do, etc, etc. That'll make a difference to how this cane looks. So I'll show you the technique and then the rest of it is down to you. The equipment we need is fairly straightforward today as we're only making a cane, so very limited in what you need. A form of craft knife, always comes in handy. A small roller just to roll the clay out which we may need at times. I use a cable needle when I'm putting these slices of the veneer together. You can use whatever other tools you have to hand. This one's about four millimeters in size. The one thing we do need today is a polymer clay blade. I often refer to these as tissue blades and they come in sort of three different sort of flexibilities. You can have very stiff ones which have got no curve in them. You can have very flexible ones which you can sort of do all sorts of curves in and this which is sort of the in-between one but it does need to be one that you can get a fair amount of curve on because we are going to curve as we cut down through our cane. So make sure you're not using one of the stiff blades because you will need to curve it as we go through. The other thing is Obviously the blades are fairly thin, so as we're curving it and you have to press down with your fingers to get it nice and even all the way down. If you think that's going to be too sharp on your fingers, then just wear some form of protective gloves or just have some form of padding on your fingers so you can cut down easily through the cane and not hurt your fingers as you go. We will be using a measuring sheet just to measure as we go, um, just makes it easier, any form of graph paper is good. The one I use is this one which is freely downloadable from www.printablepaper.net and this is the one that's four squares to an inch and I've laminated it so I can use it multiple times. Obviously do it in centimetres if you prefer. Other equipment you need, so I'm working on a tile rather than working directly on my work surface so it's nice and cool to work on but also nice and flat. I will use wet wipes and tissues to clean my hands and my equipment as I go along and of course a pasta machine dedicated for polymer clay use. If you don't have a pasta machine you can simply stack um, layers of playing cards equal numbers either side and with your roller roll over the top and that will give you the flat sheets of polymer clay instead if you don't have a pasta machine. For today's cane I'm using Fimo Soft but all of the well-known brands of polymer clay will work equally well for doing this cane. We've got quite large amounts for this because I'm doing quite a large cane um, and for me I'm going to be making it into bowls or using it for other decorative purposes. If you would rather then just use half these amounts. As you can see we've effectively got three small packs of clay here. Um, so to go through the colours we're going to make two Skinner blends, one from these three colours and one from these three colours. So here I've got the tropical green, sunflower yellow and brilliant blue, the Indian red, sunflower yellow and the royal violet and then black going to be my outline colour and my background colour and obviously change these up, use whichever colours you like and I've got some other colour alternatives which I'll mention at the end of the video. For the amounts we've got a full pack, so a full small pack, two ounces or 56 grams of the black. We've got one ounce or 28 grams of the green and the red and then half an ounce or 14 grams of the two yellows, the blue and the royal violet. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to condition all of my clay. I'll start with the lighter colours and work my way up, leaving the black till the end because it's more likely to get a mess on the pasta machine and I do use a pasta machine to condition my clay. If you're unused to conditioning polymer clay I do have a video to give you a few hints and tips and techniques on that and I'll put a link to that in the video description below. I will condition all of my clays and put them on a medium setting of the pasta machine, setting number three, and on my pasta machine, naught is thick and nine is thin. And I'll do them all in the separate amounts of these, including doing the black in two separate bits, because I find it easier rather than trying to do the whole black block in one fell swoop. So I'll get all the clay conditioned, and then we'll start off doing a Skinner blend with these three colours. So 
So I've conditioned, as I said, my three colours and put them through setting number three on the pasta machine. And obviously this was half the amount of this, but I've made them roughly the same height. But as you can see, they're not particularly rectangular, just roughly so. And the two end pieces I'm going to do diagonally across and the middle piece right down the centre. And then I'm simply going to lay those two pieces on top of there, that piece on top of there, and then they go down like that. That goes roughly diagonally across the middle, and that one goes that end. And that creates our Skinner blend. As you see, very rough and ready because I know it's all going to change slightly in the pasta machine, so I'm not worried about it being overly neat at this stage. If you're unused to doing Skinner blends or would like a few hints and tips and techniques on that, again, I have a video showing you those and I'll put a link to that in the description below this one. And all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to fold it in half and it'll go back through the pasta machine, fold first, and each time I put it through, I'll pick it up and refold it till we end up with a nice blend through from one colour through to the other. And because I've now got four thicknesses of clay I'm going to pinch the fold first to give it a bit of a helping hand going through the pasta machine and I'll put it up to one thicker setting so setting number two on my pasta machine and I'll bring you back when we've got the nice blend. Once you have your nice blend done you can either slice it or fold it into pieces that are about one and a half inches across so today just to do slightly different I'm going to do it folded And then I'm going to put it back through the pasta machine on that same setting number two, pinching the end first. Now, obviously what I've got here is I've got areas where I've got layers of three clay and areas where I've got layers of two. So what normally happens is this will curl slightly one way or other in the pasta machine. So put it through. Don't worry about the bit that's coming out of the other end, but keep tight hold of the bit that's going in the top of the pasta machine. And then once it's through, if it has got a curl, we can simply pull it back to straighten it up. And because I kept holding it at the top, we don't have much of a curl on that one at all. So I'm now going to put it back down through to my thinnest usable setting on the pasta machine. So for me, that's setting number nine. I'm going to put it through the darker end first. But as always, because I've gone down several settings, just turn the pasta machine handle a couple of times just to release any clay that's stuck underneath. If you know your machine shreds or tears your clay going down to a thin setting straight away just simply go down one or two settings at a time until you get your thinnest usable setting. So here we have our long thin strip of clay and what we're going to make is quite a pointed triangular shape. Now we can do that by making a square shape and then just simply pointing at the top or when we're concertine ring our blend as we're doing now we can start with a very thin bit at one end and get it large as we go. So that's what I'm going to do and I'm going to choose this time to do the blue as the pointed bit and all I'm going to do is I'm concertine and you can see really quite thin here and then as I go down I can widen it out. Don't worry about the shape of this too much. We'll be um, changing that slightly as we go. But do, if you can, do it so that the folds are fairly tight so you're not trapping too much air in between the folds as you go down. And just work your way down. As I say, you can get slightly wider as you go down to the bottom. There we go, you can see I've got quite a, a long stack here and mine always come out uneven but that's absolutely fine. We want the pinched piece at the top and then the wider bit at the bottom. So all I'm going to do to start with is just press it flat on my tile and just pinch along the top so I've got more of a, sh a good shape. And then I'm going to press it flat on the bottom tile so they just even out the bottom bit. So I need to press it longer down the yellow and green bit and in more at the blue bit to give me a flat edge and then I'll repeat on the other side. And what I'm looking for at the moment is a piece that's going to be about three inches by two inches, so about seven and a half centimetres by five centimetres. I'm doing that for no other reason than it's a nice size for me to work to because we're then going to cover it in black and I'm going to get the other Skinner blend down to exactly the same so that both pieces have the same size of black outline on them. If you don't want to make that, if you don't want to be that accurate, that is absolutely fine. So what I'm doing now is I'm pressing this downwards, making it larger at the bottom and 
thinner at the top again. You can do this by pressing down flat along the sides as well, getting that nice tapered look. Don't forget if your ends go uneven, turn it so it's flat on its end and then just pull the clay down, get a nice flat end again. And you can work either on your work surface or on the measuring sheet. But we want this to be accurate because we're looking for a cane that's going to kaleidoscope nicely. We will always get slight wastage at the end so the fact that the yellow is not going completely over to the end here isn't worrying me too much but I am looking for a nice consistent shape from one end to the other. So have a look, see how we're doing. So we're not too far off. So we're looking for something roughly that shape, nice and even along the whole piece. So when you've got it more or less the shape you want it, the size you want it, we're going to repeat exactly the same with our other three colours being the yellow, the red and the um, royal violet, making a Skinner blend in the same way, diagonally across the end pieces, straight down the middle and continue all the way through until we've got a piece exactly the same, the same shape. But on this one, the yellow end is going to be the pointed end, so the light end being the pointed end rather than the dark end being the pointed end on this one. And I'll bring you back when I've got this bit up to this stage. So there we have our second piece. And again, they're both roughly the same size, um, one with the dark end at one end and the light at the other, and then in reverse. And as I mentioned, if you have found it difficult to do the concertina starting for a then very thin piece, you can always do the concertina in a square and then pinch across the top. Although the, the colour tends to not be quite as accurate from one end down to the other as doing it this way. So having got those, we're now just going to cover them in a thin layer of black. So I've got one of my um, half packs of black and I've put it through, conditioned it on setting number three. And now I'm going to put it down to a thinner setting. I'm going to use choose setting number seven so quite thin on my pasta machine and I'm going to cover both of these in a layer of the black. When you put the black on try and make sure there's no air trapped in between the clay layers. it right round obviously leaving the sides free and when it overlaps at the bottom just take off the excess and then I'll repeat exactly the same with our other piece. When you've got both slabs nicely wrapped the remainder black can go with your other piece of black clay and we'll use that for inserts later on. So we now need to make both of these pieces into tendrils and I'll start by this one and then we'll do exactly the same for the other colour mix in a minute and all we're going to do is we're going to keep it in roughly these same shape and proportions but we want to cut five pieces now as I say I like to work in about inch and a half four centimetres wide when I'm making a cane it gives you a nice height to work with so we are going to need for five pieces seven and a half inches or I'd suggest 20 centimetres in length and I find when I'm doing this size, it goes down to just about one and a half inches, so probably about, again, four centimetres in height um, if you were doing that. And do it very simply by start with pressing down to elongate the cane. And then, because we've got a, a flattened triangle, I'll turn it on its side, and with my thumb, press down whilst pulling up the end, turn over and do the same on that side. Turn it on its end and then pull along the top. And I will carry on doing that until I've got it the rough size that I want. Got it roughly to the size and I've gone slightly over here because I like to chop off the very ends because you usually get a little bit of distortion. Just chop it into five equal pieces. And 
And again, don't worry about them being exactly the same because we're about to change these, the shape of these anyway. Um, but it's good to just have a nice starting point. We've got five pieces roughly the same. And then repeat exactly the same for your other piece. And I'll bring you back when I've got that done. So having got all our pieces done, we now need to make them into more of a tendril shape. And the first thing to do is decide which piece you want to be underneath the pattern and which piece you want to be on top. So I'm going to put the red ones on top and have the cooler shade underneath put the reds to one side for a moment and all we're going to do is we're going to one at a time just change the shape of these now when you're changing the shape you want it to be the same this side as it is that side so make sure you work all the way down at the bottom and all I'm going to do is I'm going to put a slight curl a couple of them I'm going to keep more or less the same size and then three of them I'm going to make two long one slightly longer and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to round off the pointed end So I've got more of that sort of shape. So I'll do the elongated ones first and all I'm doing is I'm just pulling it slightly longer as I go out. I want to keep it the same height so if you go shorter just remember to pull it slightly longer. And what we're going to do, the blue is going to be towards the corner and the yellow is going to go towards the middle of our design. So I'm just going to round my fingers just curl a piece and I'll carry on doing that as I say keeping two roughly the same size as this one slightly longer and two longer still but on all of them just gently rounding off the bit where the yellow or green end is Okay, having got your five pieces done, you just need to think about how to put them in a design. So I'm going to have them so that all the blue pieces are um, down towards one side and I'm going to change some of them are going to curl one way, some of them are going to curl the other way. So perhaps have one here, perhaps have one going sort of out sort of that way, maybe one round here, one round here and perhaps another one round here. Um, so just sort of put them in a position that looks nice. I find having at least one going in a different direction just gives an extra something and we're going to think we're going to be making a point of our triangle because we're going to end up doing a, a triangular cane and one point needs to be where the um, blue is going to be. So just do it roughly. As I mentioned right at the beginning, every time I do this, it comes out slightly different. So don't expect yours to be exactly the same. If that's what's nice about it is that we'll all have slightly different ones. But having put it roughly where you want it to be, have a look at the gaps in between the pieces because that's what we're now going to fill with our black clay. So I'm going to roll this up into a nice log and then I'm going to cut myself off pieces and fill in some of the gaps in between these pieces. So I'm just going to chop myself off a piece and the first one I'm going to look at is this gap in between these two. So it's a triangular shape but with quite a curved point in. So your fingers naturally create curves. So all I'm going to do is pull up a shape and then really elongate and pull up an inward corner so that it's going to create a nice curved shape. And I know that my pieces should still be about one and a half inches, four centimeters in height. So I can simply create a piece. If you can, the same from one side to the other. Chop off the excess. And then hopefully you can open these up slightly and that will fit nicely inside both top and bottom to hold those in place but to keep them separated by the bit of the black. So the next one was this one so we'll have him curling over and going back in. So this one we're going to have a little half circular shape again just going to fit in there. So start with just use your fingers 
and create a shape that's going to fit in. And I'll just keep building it up in the same way, creating little bits of black to infill. So for this piece, I'm going to try and get a piece that's going to fit right into that infill there. And we've got the fifth piece on. So having finished all the bits in between your pieces, we're going to inset the red ones actually right over the top. But have a look at your shape here. As I mentioned before, we're going to do a triangular, this being a point. And we still want to keep a slight curve in this one. So I'm going to create a half a semicircle to go in here. And I also want to keep a slight curve on this one. So I'm going to create a little bit of black here and probably a little bit of black here, like a corner shape, just to give me something that I can inset the red into. going to keep a little bit of black off to one side as well because sometimes when we're insetting the reds you need an extra little bit of black and obviously if you need more then just grab yourself more than that. Okay, so we've got our piece finished, we've got some little leftover bits of black, and now we're going to start on the red colour. So we're going to do exactly the same as we did before, this time just um, smoothing off the darker end, and we're going to do again two smaller pieces curved, one medium piece and two slightly longer pieces. As before, keeping them the same height, you can sort of go back and check with the height of the piece you've got going to make sure they're the same height. And just put the curves in them exactly the same as we did before. Okay so same as before we're going to look for something that looks sort of quite a nice pattern so perhaps in setting one there let's do one so it's going to be down the other way and then we can do perhaps one up there and perhaps one around the outside and then they are going to sit through and on top of our green piece. So having decided what your pattern's going to be, we're also needing to think, I'm going to do them so they're more or less opposite. Um, you're then going to end up with a, almost like a, a square or a round shaped cane. So if you wanted to do a square one, then obviously just accentuate that shape. What I'm going to do is I like it to put it into a triangular shape, but to make it look better, rather than have this as a point down this end, you'd end up with too much sort of black up here. So if you try and do it so it's going opposite to start with, then we'll force it into a triangle afterwards. Okay, so I'm going to start by doing my middle piece. So let's put those two off to that side. And this middle piece is going to sit in there. So take either the end of your craft knife or your knitting needle and just inscribe where the inside line is going to fit. You are then going to take your blade and you are going to curve it. And as mentioned earlier, if, if it's going to cause you a problem with your fingers, put some gloves or something on. Um, I'm okay. But I'm going to then put the blade through it. And you want to keep the blade upright and keep it even going the whole way down through the cane. 
Okay, and then that piece just sits partly inside. Now I'm going to have to open that out more, and that is fine. And then you want to put these pieces back, and you want to put them back in such a way that if you can, they match. So pay attention to putting them back. Do the top to start with, flip over, and then make sure you're matching down the bottom as well. And just push them back where they should be. So our next piece was about there, and this is where you can just alter it slightly. So I'm going to do it so it's not overlapping the underneath red piece. I'll pull it actually slightly back, so I'm going to take advantage of going around the edge of that one. So we'll probably do him something like that. And I'm going to pull that one back for now because I don't want to cut through that one. Same thing as before. Put your blade in. And this is where you, you don't have to go exactly where you cut, just roughly where you uh, marked rather with your craft knife. But again, just push all the way down through. And now I can sit that one in there and around there. And then we'll fit that back on. First at one side, then the other, because you will find it is different from top to bottom. But really try and make sure you've got those lines matched with black and just force the other piece in. Okay, so we'll do actually that piece. I'm just going to leave that piece as it is because we want some of the red, we want the red skein around the outside on both sides. So generally we only have three in pieces or three pieces to in cut. So this piece is going to go through there, but that is then going to leave us, can you see here, a little hole, which is absolutely fine because that's what we're going to put some of our extra black in. So same as before, let's curve him round so he's going round there. And then we'll get some of this black and we'll just inset the black in now. And then we can put all those pieces back together. bottom and I'm looking here where this one comes out on that side and then for our last piece I'm just going to curl him in round there and I've got another little bit there I'm going to add a little bit of black in there so just about half of that just to make myself a really nice thin long triangular piece just by pulling these pieces out just fit him in and then the last piece fits on and then with my last little pieces of black left over, I'm just going to put, because that's going to go down to a point, I'm just going to put a little, again, a thin wedge of black just in that side. Okay, and that is our cane finished and now it's just a case of reducing. So you see what I mean there, that if you were doing a square cane, it's actually easy to make that a point, that a point and those are your other two corners to make it into a square one. But we're going to make it into a triangular cane just because I think it looks nice. This blue is going to be a corner and this red is going to be a corner. So at some stage I need to find a point which is going to be the third corner, corner and which piece is going to be flat. So I think I'm going to make that bit flat and this bit a corner. So the easiest thing to do is to rock the bit you want to make flat. So we know that these two pieces are going to be corners and this piece is going to be flat 
and that piece is going to be a corner and by just gently working your hands you can start to force the clay into the shape you want. Don't worry at the moment that this is bulging out here, we'll, we'll come back to that in a minute. We're just, at the moment, just simply working on the fact of making our two colours into the corner pieces. And again, you can see why I'm saying that everyone's is going to be different when we do this, because everyone will have different motions of their hands, everyone will create their triangle in a slightly different way. And because this bit's longer than this bit, which is the bit we didn't force flat, I'm just pressing down and pulling it longer till we end up with a roughly triangular cane. all the same height all the way around. So there we have our triangular cane which we can now reduce down into the triangular, proper triangular shape and kaleidoscope. If you have got the cane caps or the cane savers, the um, bits of acrylic plastic that go on the end of your cane to save it when you are reducing the cane, use those, they are fantastic and you can get them now in the sizes that will be roughly about the size of this cane. So yeah, I've got one there which just about perfectly fits on this size. Obviously you have two, one either end, and you put one either end and you simply work the cane in between times. Those of you who've watched my videos before know that I quite actually like having a bit of wastage on the end because I will use that as a veneer under my clay for doing other things. What I'm planning to do now is I will reduce this cane into a nice triangular shape, get it down till it's about one inch across each side um, and I'll do that off camera as I said because this is just a short video just on the cane but obviously you want to see what it's going to look like when it cuts through first time and also when we put slices together in a veneer because you want to see the pattern we're going to get however I've already covered that process in um, another video in great detail so if you wanted to go and see that done go to the polymer clay bowl with hexagon designs tutorial for reducing the cane go to 20 minutes at 50 seconds and for taking slices of the reduced cane and making a precise hexagon veneer which is what I'm going to do in just a moment go to 26 minutes and as well as writing it on the screen just now I will also put the links in the video description below to that video plus those times that I have mentioned. So I've reduced it to a state where it's equal along each side and normally when I get to about this stage I'll chop it in half and I cut it in half at this stage, A, so I can see the pattern, but B, so I can also reduce one side, one size, one side, another size, if I needed it for different parts of a project. So, the moment of truth. Let's see how our pattern looks. And obviously, you won't get the full effect until you put it together in hexagons or square patterns, but you can start to see the effect you're going to get. So, I'll take one piece now. Reduce it down, as I say, till it's about an inch across one side, or about um, two and a half centimetres, and create a full hexagon pattern, so you can see the full extent of the pattern when it all comes together. So that's the cane reduced down, and that's the pattern that it makes. And as I say, every time I do it, it comes out slightly different, but it's a really good fun one to do, and it gives you that lovely feeling of all these bits sort of entwined and intermingled with a slight tendril look. As always, I show you different colour options. So here's another version. And on this one, the two blends were bronze, gold and sunflower yellow. And then plum, which is a very purpley colour, brilliant blue and aqua, which is the light blue. And that gave that version. And in this one, I did royal violet, orange and sunflower yellow for the orangey one. And then for the blue one, I did plum, mainly brilliant blue, a little bit of green and then into lemon yellow to give that nicer, brighter green. But as you can see, they all come out very differently depending on the colour placement and where you put the tendrils. Just to show you a couple of options, this is a bowl that I've made completely from polymer clay using the tendril cane and this colour option was exactly the same as we've done today. And on the back, I've got the red version. So you can choose what you want to do. 
For anyone wanting to make a bowl, I've already mentioned the polymer clay bowl tutorial that I have on YouTube. And again, as I said, I'll put a link to that. That's for making simple bowls, but for something more complex like this, then I also do have an Etsy tutorial. And again, I'll put a link to that for anyone who's interested. As you can see here, I've used the blue and bronze combination in this little coral tail fish that I made again from polymer clay. Just a fun little imaginary creature. So it's quite a versatile cane. There's loads of different things you can do with it. So that's the end of our project. Just creating a cane that you can use in multiple different ways. And I can't wait to see the photos of what you've done. And don't forget to tag me if you show photos so I can see what you've been up to and see what you've done with your variations. I hope you enjoyed that one. The only difficult bit really was that cutting down through with the curved blade. Other than that, it's quite straightforward and a good fun one and say so the variations and the possibilities with this one are endless so just have fun experiment and enjoy thank you so much for watching and as always a special thank you to those of you who subscribe i really do appreciate it i think i'm going to have fun with this one and perhaps make another bowl or something you can always follow me on facebook or instagram if you want to see what the latest creations are that i have made other than that i think that's it for now Hopefully I'll see you next time. Bye for now. Bye.